I'm Howard Q, contributing editor for the Training Journal and Chief Learning Architect at CodeCrew. I recently attended the SPBT conference in Orlando, which had a lot of interesting content, including a fascinating presentation by Dr. Price Kerfoot. I had the pleasure of chatting with Dr. Kerfoot, Harvard Medical School professor, EdTech researcher, and QStream board member. A rough cut of our interview follows, and a full feature article will appear later in the Training Journal. Dr. Kerfoot led groundbreaking research in space learning and has recently explored game mechanics in learning. We discussed these topics, beginning with a question on Dr. Kerfoot's career focus. My focus has been trying to apply clinical trial rigor to the evaluation of education and educational technology. The first trial that I did was an eye-opener. This was a randomized trial with about 360 students at four schools, and we showed that the standard web-based teaching modules could be very helpful for increasing knowledge in the short term, but long-term retention was extremely poor. So it, what has, that has launched my career direction, which has been trying to focus on how can we optimize the delivery of education to boost acquisition of knowledge and its long-term retention. So tell me how you arrived at the space learning concept. What got you intrigued and interested in well, when we've had this initial study and, and the poor retention, I dove into the, as a urologist, it was, I dove into the psychology research literature and two main principles came out that seemed to be of value. One was the spacing effect that had been studied as far back as the 19th century with Ebbinghaus. That the, the, if you present information and then reinforce it over space intervals of time, it increases the acquisition of knowledge and encodes it in such a way that it's preferentially retained. And the testing effect, most people think of that as just sticking a dipstick into the tank, pulling it out and seeing how much knowledge is in it. On the other hand, that retrieval practice can dramatically improve long-term retention. So we combine the two of those, and it's really been an iterative process. So initially, with the web-based teaching modules that we did with the first trial, I then, my first study was sending just blank emails of questions to people afterwards to reinforce it, and we found that that was effective. Then we tried to do it ahead of time to try to prime their learning, and we found that was effective. And then the folks at Harvard nicely jerry-rigged a system by which we could automatically send emails to folks, have them record an answer, it was, and then get immediate feedback. That was effective, and we've done with that about 16 large randomized trials looking with specific research questions as to when it works, what's the methodology, what's the value of the spacing, what's the value of the testing. And then we developed a system where it would actually include various game mechanics where the interval of reinforcement over time would then vary based on whether an individual answered a question correctly or not. So. The beauty is that by aggregating these questions together, you can get a valid and reliable assessment tool, but then over time, to, it'll then adapt to the given individual and to their competencies. So what would you say the bottom line findings are? That bolus education, which we term binge and purge, okay. which is the norm, is not effective at long-term retention that there should be an assumption that learning is forgotten over time and steps need to be taken as one constructs an educational uh, intervention to employ methods that not only uh, teach the material initially but then maintain it. And that the other kind of take home is that there is now very strong evidence that these, the spacing effect and the testing effect are, are very strong tools to achieve greater long-term retention of, of learning. And then the system that we've developed by harnessing those has been very effective as well. Great. So is it fair to say that um, if you look at the total amount of time a, a learner would invest in learning something, that they're going to get a better ROI, return on that time of investment, if, you, if it's somewhat spaced out? Yes, and there are a couple studies that we've done that specifically have looked at this. The first was one where we took identical content on a material that is, has an extremely poor half-life in my head, which is histopathology diagnosis of urology. So <laughs> most people don't need to learn this. As a urologist, I needed to for my boards, and it's, it's difficult to remember. So it was a good experimental system in which to look. And we did one study where we gave identical content and identical time of exposure to, to, to the 
residents, the trainees from US and Canada, about 700, they were randomized either to get all the content or bolus over a three week period or in three modules that were iterative or over 16 weeks the identical content and then we tested subsets of them with similar content over the following 30 weeks to uh, plot the forgetting curves and we found that the cramming works if you need something immediately cram it and you'll get a spike in learning but then we found that even out to 20 weeks afterwards that uh, people's ability to perform the histopathology diagnosis and to retain their skills was back down to baseline. That said, if you space the learning over time, that you would then be able to have a slower uptake because it takes the 16 weeks, but on the other hand, it's uh, encoded in such a way that it had demonstrably greater long-term retention. So that would suggest that contact time was held, was similar between the groups and that the spacing can dramatically Im improve that. And then the idea of doing an initial cramming burst followed by, let's say, regular reinforcement, follow-up reinforcement. What, what is that effective for? So it's a great question because a lot of people with whom we talk about this are still in the very much feel that I have this bulk of material that I need to shove down people's throats over time. So, and if you have a short time period and you have to get people up to a high level of knowledge, then the binge and purge a uh, bolus presentation can be an effective way. That said, if you can pair that w uh, with delivering the content and in in taking advantage of the spacing and testing effect over time, once you've reached that higher level after the bolus, to maintain that level of expertise, I think that can be very effective. We have not, we do not have a formal study of after a bolus to look, we have with regards to a, a large CME event, a face-to-face -face event, and found that it can really help with behavior change longer term. But we have not had a, re my, I cannot answer that with regards to my own research findings. Yeah, but that's your, that's your uh, analysis. I think based that based, my extrapolation based on, uh, on our work is that bolus can be effective if your need is short term. But it should, you should go into it with the recognition that the, it's not likely not to be long-lasting and it should be partnered with something that can give that longer-term punch. Okay.